Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. As we saw in the last lesson of this chapter, when you draw a shape in your slide, the shape should appear as being already selected. However, if it is not selected, then you do need to click it in order to select it prior to formatting the shape. Once the shape has been selected, you will then see the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab appear in the ribbon. This tab provides you with several formatting options for the selected object. Now at the left end of the Format tab, in the Drawing Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon, is the Insert Shapes group. The large scroll box in this group contains quick access to the shapes that you can click and then draw in your slide, and it functions in the exact same way that the Shapes Buttons drop-down menu does back on the Insert tab in the ribbon. Now to the right of that are two additional buttons, the Edit Shape button and the Text Box button. For some types of shapes that are drawn by hand, such as the squiggle and the freeform shapes, you can click the Edit Shape button and then select the Edit Points command after you finish drawing the shape in order to display the editing points on the object. You may then click and drag the points so that you can change the shape of the object that you've drawn. Also note that you can select a shape, click the Edit Shape button, roll down to the Change Shape command, and then replace the selected shape with another shape of your choosing by just selecting the replacement shape from the listing of shapes shown. Also note that for some shapes, such as the rectangle, the oval, the triangle, you can click on them to select them, click the Edit Shape button, and then choose Convert to Freeform in order to convert the shape into a freeform shape. You can then click the Edit Shape button, choose Edit Points, and then click and drag any of the editing points to change the actual shape. Note that on the Format tab, on the Insert Shapes group, the Text Box button, when clicked, simply allows you to draw a text box into your presentation slide. Now back on the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon, you should see the Shape Styles group next. In the Shape Styles section, you can make stylistic changes to your shape that affect the appearance of the fill and the line of the shape. You can scroll through the choices shown in the large scroll box of preset shape appearances and then click on the one that you would like to apply to your shape if desired. You can also simply use the buttons available to the right of the scroll box to completely customize the appearance of your shape. You can use the Shape Fill drop-down to fill the inside of your shape with one of the many available colors, pictures, gradients, or textures that are available. Note that this button will be completely unavailable for shapes that do not contain any fillable area, such as a line or an arrow. Now if you wish to select a fill color for a selected shape, then you can simply click on one of the color choices shown in the Shape Fill Buttons drop-down menu. If the colors shown aren't quite what you need, notice that you can select the More Fill Colors command in order to open the Colors dialog box. In the Colors dialog box, you can create almost any color you like. You can either click the Standard tab and then choose one of the colors shown in the Honeycomb of Color Choices, or you can click the Custom tab, and then click and drag in the rainbow gradient to select the color that you want. You can then adjust the hue using the slider at the side. Note that if you open the color dialog box to make a color, then just click the OK button once you've made your choice in order to apply it. Note that if you also applied a fill effect to a shape, and then wish to remove it, you can select the No Fill command from the Shape Fill Buttons drop-down menu in order to remove any fill effect. You can also insert a picture into your shape as a fill effect. To do this, you would simply choose the Picture command from the Shape Fill Buttons drop-down menu of choices in order to open the Insert Picture dialog box. 
Here you can navigate to and then select the picture that you would like to use as the fill effect inside of the selected shape. You can select a gradient to apply to the selected shape by rolling your mouse pointer over the gradient command in the shape fill buttons drop down menu and then selecting one of the preset gradients that you would like to apply to the shape. If you would instead like to add a texture to the shape then just simply choose the texture command from the shape fill buttons drop down menu and then click on the texture that you want to apply from the choices shown. Back in the Shape Styles group on the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab in the ribbon, you will also find the Shape Outline drop-down button. The choices that you make here affect the appearance of the lines in the shape. This is also the button that you can use to alter the appearance of shapes that are nothing more than lines, such as a line shape or an arrow shape. Now if you click the Shape Outline button, you can see that you can choose a color shown in the color palette of choices or you can remove a color by using the No Outline choice. If you would like to simply change the width of the outline or the line, then make a selection from the side menu that appears when you hold your mouse pointer over the Weight command in the Shape Outline drop-down menu. You can also click the Shape Outline drop-down menu and then roll down to the dashes command in order to set a dash style for your selected border or line. If you're formatting a selected line shape or an arrow shape, then you can click the shape outline button, roll down to the arrows command, and choose the beginning and end points for the line from the choices that are available in the side menu. Note that you can also select a shape and click the Shape Effects button in the Shape Styles group on the Format tab of the Drawing Tools Contextual tab in order to apply various styles of preset effects to your selected shape. Just roll down to the selected category and then you can click on one of the variations that appear in the side menu and that will apply it to your selected shape. Now if your selected shape contains text, then you can select a word art style to apply from the listing of styles shown in the word art styles group. Note that you can also use the text fill drop down button to set the fill color of the text that's inside of the shape. So you can choose a color, a picture, a gradient or a texture just like you can with the actual fill color of the shape itself. You can then use the text outline drop down to choose an outline for the text and you could choose a color, a weight for the outline of the text, or a dash style for the outline of the text. So it works very much like the Shape Outline button. You can click the Text Effects drop-down to apply a category of effects to the text in your shape. Now the buttons in the Arrange group on the Format tab in the Drawing Tools Contextual tab display the same options that you had when you learned to format pictures and clip art. So in the Arrange group you'll find buttons that allow you to change the placement of the selected shape. If you have overlapping shapes placed within your presentation slide, then you can select one of the overlapping shapes and click Bring to Front or Send to Back in order to bring it to the front or send it to the back. And so that can change the order of stacked shapes in your slide. Now notice if you have multiple shapes simultaneously selected in your slide, then you can click the Group button to group them together 
as a single object. If you need to ungroup grouped objects, you can select the grouped object and click the group button to choose the ungroup command. You can then manipulate them independently of each other. Also, when you have multiple shapes selected, you can click the alignment drop-down to choose how to align the objects to each other, or if you would like, you can choose the align to slide option to align them both to the slide. You can also select a shape and click the rotate button in the arrange group to choose a rotation option for the selected shape. Also like images, you can use the options in the size group to resize the shape if desired. So you can use the spinner buttons to the right of the height and width commands in order to change the shape. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.